Hello, it's Helen from Journal with Purpose and welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be creating in my altered book. And I have completed um, a couple of pages, I think, that I haven't shared here on YouTube. But I decided that today I was going to get everything out and film a new page. And I'm going to be adding quite a few different layers on here. And because I want to protect my paper, the first thing I'm going to do is put down a layer of acrylic gesso. And this helps to stop different paints and things kind of seeping down into the pages underneath. And it also helps to give a little bit of tooth to anything you're adding on top. So I'm going to use just an old big brush for this. And I'm going to put some scrap paper underneath. Because I removed lots of the pages from this book, I know I can get away with a reasonable amount of different layers, collage and adding pieces on top without it getting too, too chunky. So I'm not worried about the layer being too thick. I just want to make sure that it's got some protection on there. I've really enjoyed working in this altered book and I know it's something that I will definitely be doing again in the future. I think it's really satisfying seeing an old book from a charity shop take on a new life. I'm not taking it all the way up to the edges, but I'm going quite close to it. And that's partly just because I like to be able to see some of the kind of discoloration and bits coming through from that page behind. And I'm now going to put that to one side to dry because uh, I want to get on with preparing some other elements. And one thing I would recommend is if you're using gesso is to make sure that you wash your brush out quite quickly because when it dries it really can cause some damage to your brush. I've learned that the hard way. I've moved my book to one side and I'm going to die cut some paper. I've got a really old now Sizzix Big Shot die cutting machine. So I'm going to put down my first plate and I'm going to be using an old book page for this. And the dies that I'm going to be using are some Tim Holtz Sizzix Thinlets and these are the alteration set. And what I was looking for is some dies that had plenty of holes in them. And you'll see why once I get to the next stage of adding them to my page. If you don't have anything like this, if you've got even just a hole punch and something where you can create kind of lots of little holes in your paper so that at the next stage we, you'll be able to see some paint dripping through them. So I think I'm probably not going to get, oh no, I can get all of them on there just, I think. And I did a bit of die cutting at the weekend, so I do already have some of these that I'll be able to use. So I'm just going to pop my other plate on top and move that through the machine. So now when I lift these off, I should have some really 
beautiful designs on that old book paper. And what I will be doing is then tearing around each of these elements to use them as a collage. And even all these little bits that are in here, they can be quite fun to use as well, just for a little bit of extra layer and dimension on this. So again, as I said, even if you've got a hole punch, you can just punch out lots of little holes like this. It will still add a really fun effect. And because I did do some at the weekend, I also made myself a little ephemera folder. So I have got some other bits tucked in here and I punched out some holes and flowers, corners, and I've got a few bits here. So I'm gonna grab these all out and I'm gonna have a quick look through them so that we can just start gluing a few bits down onto our page. I've just given the gesso a quick dry with my heat tool. I'm now gonna start adding layers of some of these die cut papers and tear some others out. And I'm gonna be using some craft PVA glue to stick them down. And I'm really not worried about kind of how they go. My rough plan at the moment is to try and cover something probably along this corner here and along and some up here as well but to try and get probably the bulk of my papers on this corner and the only thing I'm going to make sure really is that where possible I've got the die cut pieces on the top because I do want all of those little holes to be something I can get to with my watercolour paint in a moment. So I'm just going to take a few minutes and start gluing all of these down. So I've now added quite a few different layers on here and as I mentioned I've tried to make sure that the papers that have been die cut are predominantly on the top and I've also added a couple of the little shapes that had been cut out as well, anything to add some more dimension. So before moving on to the next stage, again, we want to make sure this is entirely dry and then we're going to be using the gesso again, but watering it down slightly. I first saw this technique, I think it was on a wonderless class back in 2020. It was a long time ago, but I think that's where it came from. And it's a really fun way, I think, of adding some texture and layers on your pages. I'm going to squeeze some gesso onto this old ceramic plate. And then this is where I'm gonna mix it up with some water. Cause you want it to be quite nice and runny so that you can add a thin layer over the top of your collaged pages. So I'm gonna keep just adding this all over and you still want to be able to see a nice amount of that print coming through. And it doesn't matter if some of your bits of paper are stuck up a little bit. In fact, that will definitely add to the effect at the end. And particularly if you've die cut out some kind of fussy shapes, it can be hard to glue them down precisely. And the joy with this is that you really don't need to. So you can see it's just a really pale kind of milky wash on top of here. And I think this book is perfect for these kinds of projects. 
because I want to kind of bulk the book back out to roughly the same size as it was in its original form. So anything like this with lots of chunky layers will definitely help with that. So just keep going with this until you've got the layer all over all of your different little collaged pieces. Okay, now that's done. I'm gonna give everything a quick dry off again and get out my watercolor paints. The paints that I'm going to be using are the Kuritaki Ganzai Tambi range. And I think there's some beautiful colors in here. And I've decided, I think I'm gonna focus mainly kinds of on browns and oranges for this to kind of keep in with an autumnal feel, feel at the moment. So I'm gonna pick out the colors I think that I most want to use. So I think that's a lovely little selection there. And for starters, I'm gonna pick a kind of base color. So I'm gonna go for this one. And I want it to be quite pigmented, so I'm going to add it straight from the pan. And I'm gonna be painting right on top of those layers and really encouraging the paint to travel down through the holes of all the little die cut pieces. And this is where I think it's so interesting because you've lost a little bit of the detail when you've added the thin layer of gesso on top and now they start to come back again and it, I think it's just so lovely seeing all those different shapes and gives it a really nice feel to it. So I'm just going to carry on and add this base layer over the collage on both corners. So that's my base layer now added. And what I'm also gonna do is add some splashes of this paint over kind of the rest of my page too. And now back to my drying. I've just got a really cheap kind of heat tool here, but it works perfectly well. And as always, I'll try and remember to leave links to all of the products I've used down below. I'm now going to start adding some small sections of the other colors. I don't want to hide too much of what I've already added, but so I'm just gonna add some in a few different places. And I'm again making sure that it goes right down into those little holes from the die cutting. So not too much, but just enough to add a little bit of extra interest. Over on Patreon this month, we've been doing some 
art journaling so I think that's definitely kind of got me back in the mood for wanting to get all of my supplies out and really play I think it's just so joyous especially when things are still a bit tough and a bit strange to be able to lose yourself for a while with just kind of splashing around paint and playing with paper it's just such a wonderful thing to be able to do so I've nearly got all of my colors down now and I love how that's all looking and you can see all of the shapes coming through from the paper really beautifully so I think it's going to be it's got some lovely colors in there as well definitely feels a bit like splashes of autumn on my page so again, I'm now just going to dry all of that off before moving on to the next stage. The next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of stamping on top. I'm using black stays on ink and I've got a stamp here. I think it's a mini paper artsy and then some of my stamps from my product range with London Gifties. And I'm not, I'm not looking for precise prints here at all. In fact, I'm actually gonna bend this back because I just want a little bit of the text to come through. And that's one of the nice things with the rubber stamps. I love wooden block stamps, but if you're doing something like this, which is a bit more abstract, it's a really nice way of being able to just get a bit of the print because you can bend them. So I think I might use one of the florals as well. Again, not for the actual print itself, but just to get some kind of interesting patterns. I'm just gonna add a little bit next to each of the places I think that I've added the text. So any stamps will be fine for this. Okay, and now I'm gonna have a start looking through my stash and try and find something that I can use perhaps as a focal image on top of here. So I'm gonna have a little look in my ephemera folder. I do love some of these images, so that's a possibility. I also recently bought uh, this floral pack from Bronwyn Creates and the sales from her shop go to helping the hedgehogs that she rescues and are in her care. So I know I'll be using these certainly in some of the projects, if not today. I'm just going to play with a few different things for a moment and decide what I most want to add on my page. I decided in the end that I really liked those two together. So again, I'm going to use a little bit of my PVA glue. Before loading this video up, I am going to have a look through from the Wonderlust classes from last year and see if I can find the person who shared a class with this kind of technique in it. I'm hoping it won't be too difficult to find. It's the problem is I take lots of classes which I love and then I forget where I kind of saw and learnt different things from. So I will see if I can find her and if I can I will definitely leave perhaps a link to whatever social media or YouTube channel she has. I think it's just such a fun technique, so relaxing. It takes a little while, but I just love this effect of all of the different kind of watercolour paints pooling in amongst the shapes that you've cut out. I think it's a really lovely idea. Okay, so I've got kind of like my focal points down now. And I really like those together actually. They're, there's quite a strong contrast between the two. 
And to finish it off, I'm just going to have a look for a quote that I can add and think about how I might be able to add some journal writing to my page. So for the quote, I'm going to add this start each day with a grateful heart. This um, was one of the pages in my bundles printables. And I'm just using some Distress Ink in Vintage Photo around the edge of it. I still quite like the fact that the background of it's going to be in white because that will make it stand out. But just adding a bit of colour around the edges I think will look really nice. Help that kind of settle in to the background of the page. I've had so much fun creating these pages and I really hope that if you decide to have a go, if you're on Instagram, please do tag me in. I'm journal with purpose over there. I'd love to see what you create and how you get on with it. Before I move on to my journal writing, actually I'm just going to stamp my date. I found this stamp again recently and I've been using it on absolutely everything. I'm not quite sure why, but it's quite nice when you've only got little bits of space to play with. I don't want to detract too much from what I've got going on on the page. But I do want to add just a little bit of journal writing. So I'm just trying to decide I didn't know whether to write and pencil over the top of here. I think I'm just going to perhaps glue this on the bottom here. And it's only a little piece, but it just gives me a chance to get a few little thoughts out about the things that I'm feeling really grateful for at the moment. And that's something I'm trying to focus so, so hard on especially on the tougher days, is just taking a few moments to think about all of the really good things. So that's it, that's my journal pages all done. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video and I hope you're doing well. As always, a massive thank you to everybody who's joined me over on Patreon. Thank you ever so much for watching and I look forward to speaking with you really soon in my next video.